think you know all about the fear campaigns that gripped the nation during the Cold War? The Red Scare, the congressional witch hunt against communism. Well, think again, because there was a second scare that may have had a longer and much more direct impact on many people's lives. Beginning in the late 1940s, the Lavender Scare was a campaign to systematically remove anyone thought to be LGBTQ plus from the government. Post Second World War, young Americans began to migrate to the cities. Underground gay communities were established and began to flourish. There was a growing fear of homosexuality in the United States, and it was illegal across much of the country. In the era of the Cold War, LGBTQ plus people were seen as immoral and subversive, prone to dangerous influences. It was thought they posed a security risk to the nation. And when Senator Joseph McCarthy linked homosexuality to communism during a Red Scare congressional speech, it fueled the firestorm of the Lavender Scare. The government launched two congressional investigations. The first sought information into what it called the infiltration of subversives and moral perverts into the executive branch. The second collected data on the extent of gay and lesbian government employees and urged federal agencies to strictly enforce existing policy on moral standards. These investigations ultimately led President Dwight Eisenhower to sign Executive Order 10450, which banned gays and lesbians from employment in the federal government. In 1957, Frank Kameny was fired from the U.S. Army Map Service for his sexuality. He took his case to court, and though he lost, he went on to become a lead campaigner for gay rights, finally receiving an apology in 2009. And at age 90, Helen James successfully sued the Air Force for her undesirable discharge from service in 1955 because of her sexual orientation. Over the decades, thousands of LGBTQ plus people were fired from their jobs and publicly humiliated. The ban remained in place until 1975, when the Civil Service Commission finally reversed it. All federal agencies followed suit in 1998, when U.S. President Bill Clinton signed Executive Order 13087, prohibiting employment discrimination based on sexual orientation. When, if ever, is it appropriate for a government to intrude on the private lives of its employees? 